Good afternoon, children. Welcome uh, for the new session. That is your eleventh class. Uh, we will be starting with the first chapter. That is the living world. Now. the earth is a home for diverse forms of living organisms in different habitats all this living organisms constitute the living world this organisms live in various habitats like forest mountains deserts oceans fresh water bodies hot springs polar regions and almost every place of the earth living things possess certain characteristics which make them different from non living things some of these important characteristics are number 1 is growth that is increase in mass then reproduction that is produce of springs number 3 is capable of carrying out metabolism that is biochemical reactions occurs inside the body consciousness means living organisms respond to environmental stimuli now major characteristics of living organisms are number 1 is growth living things grow with increase in mass and increase in number of individuals or cells in multicellular organisms growth occurs by cell division uh, or increase in number of cells children in this slide you can see that the characteristics of living organisms according to one definition living organisms are open systems that maintain homeostasis are composed of cells have life cycle they undergo metabolism and can grow they adapt to their environment respond to stimuli reproduce and evolve let us start with the first one that is growth as i've already told you living things grow with increase in mass and increase in number of individuals or cells in multicellular organisms growth occurs by cell division or increase in number of cells the growth occurs continuously in plants throughout their life span whereas in animals it occurs only up to a certain age however growth replacement of lost cells occur throughout the life in unicellular organisms growth can be observed under the microscope by simply counting the number of cells via in vitro experiment such organisms grow by cell division since in unicellular organisms a single cell constitute an individual therefore in such cases cell division is basically a means of reproduction non living things like mountains boulders means the large rock sand dunes means the small hills of sand also grow in size but just by accumulating the material on their external surface thus growth in living things is internal while in non living things it is external growth therefore cannot be taken as the sole defining criteria for living organisms it must be accompanied by the specific conditions under which it can be observed in all living organisms it is to be noted that a dead dead organism does not grow now let us study about reproduction reproduction a characteristic of living organism is the process of producing offspring possessing features similar to those of parents 
in multicellular organisms the mode of reproduction is generally sexual which involves fusion of two kinds of gametes to form an offspring some living organisms also reproduce by asexual means some examples of organisms are fungi multiply and spread very fast by producing millions of asexual spores some fungi the filamentous algae and the protonema means the thread like chain of cells of mosses multiply by fragmentation in yeast and hydra budding occurs to produce new organisms whereas in planaria that are flat worms true regeneration of fragmented body parts occur this parts in turn grow as a new organism unicellular organisms like bacteria algae and amoeba reproduce by increasing the number of cells that is through cell division growth is synchronized with reproduction some organisms like mules sterile worker bees infertile human couples etc do not reproduce hence reproduction cannot be all inclusive defining characteristic of living organisms however it is an important differentiating characteristic of living organisms from non living things as the latter do not reproduce sexual reproduction is commonly observed in higher plants and animals it involves formation of gametes by two parents that is opposite sex of the same species and new individual is developed by fusion of gametes the offspring is not a clone of either of the parents many organisms however do not reproduce for example mules sterile workers worker hun- bees infertile human couples etc so as i said reproduction is a characteristic of living organisms but it cannot be taken as the defining characteristic or property of the living organisms now the third characteristic is the metabolism metabolism is an another characteristic and defining feature of all living things all living organisms are made of chemicals which are constantly being formed or changed into some other biomolecules the sum total of anabolic or constructive reactions which are called anabolism and catabolic or destructive reactions also called catabolism continuously occurring inside the body is called metabolism so metabolism is equal to anabolism plus catabolism metabolism occurs in all unicellular and multicellular organisms its two stages includes that is anabolism the process of building up or synthesizing the synthesizing of complex substances from simpler ones example photosynthesis and catabolism the process of breakdown of complex substances into simpler substances example respiration releasing waste outside metabolic reactions cannot be demonstrated outside the body hence metabolism can be considered as a defining feature of all living organisms without exception no non living object exhibit metabolism now the important differences between anabolism and catabolism are anabolism is the sum total of constructive processes 
and catabolism is the sum total of destructive processes. Second difference is in anabolism complex substances are formed from simpler ones whereas in catabolism simpler substances are formed from complex ones. In anabolism energy is stored and in catabolism energy is released. Anabolism is required for growth and maintenance whereas catabolism is required for performance of activities. Now let us move to the fourth characteristic of living organism that is cellular organization. The cells are the building blocks of all living things whether plants, animals or humans. The unicellular organisms are made of a single cell while multicellular organisms are formed by millions of cells. The cells contain protoplasm that is the living matter and cell organelles that are the parts of cells which perform several activities at the cellular level and result into various life processes. Therefore, cellular organization is also considered as defining characteristic of living organism. Moving to the next characteristic that is consciousness. All living organisms from the simplest prokaryotes to the most complex eukaryotes have excellent ability to sense their environment. They respond to various physical, chemical and biological stimuli. The various external factors to which living organisms respond are light, water, temperature, pollutants, other organisms etc. Light duration or photoperiod. Photoperiod is the physiological reaction of organisms to the length of day or night. So, light duration or photoperiod affects many seasonal breeders, plants as well as animals. All living things respond to chemicals entering their body. Humans are superior to all living or organisms as they have an additional ability of self-consciousness. Therefore, Consciousness can be considered as defining property of living organisms. However, in human beings, it is difficult to define living state in certain situations like if patients lying in coma supported by machines that replace heart and lungs are brain dead with no self-consciousness. Thus, we can say that living organisms are self-replicating, evolving and self-regulating interactive systems capable of responding to external stimuli. All living organisms are linked to each other through a common genetic material. Children about nomenclature we will be studying in our next class. I hope you have understood all the characteristics of the living organisms and now you are able to differentiate whether the characteristics are the defining or the non-defining characteristics of living organism. So that's all for today. In our next video we will start with nomenclature. I hope you all have understood this. Thank you.